for tuning in to Hacks and Hobbies with your host, Junaid. In season two of Hacks and Hobbies, we're visited by our amazing guests coming from all walks of life. We want to learn their story, their struggles, and their journey on how they got to where they are today. So stick around. Welcome to another Monday Breakdown. This is week number 28. Last week on the podcast, we got to hear from Mark Metry, how to become an evolved version of yourself. Now, why I say evolved is because Mark Metry is the podcast host for Humans 2.0, and he's got some amazing conversations with even amazing people. So check out Humans 2.0, check out this episode, Mark Metry's how to become an evolved version of yourself on Hacks and Hobbies and learn his method and his backstory. Then on Wednesday, we got to, we got to speak with Chris Mack, how to create a humanized company and leaders. Now, why are we creating humanized companies? Well, a lot of the times, the bottom line is the bottom line. And when you're focusing on the bottom line in your company, you tend to ignore the human aspect of it all and who's behind working on your products, working on your services. We're all human. So having a humanized company and leadership, well, super important. Chris Mack tells us a little bit, little bit about what it means to create a humanized company. Then on Thursday, we got to speak with Holly Shan. Holly Shan. How to talk with other beings. These other beings are the animals that we find on this planet Earth. These other beings are the pets that we keep in our homes. These other beings are as much important for this planet as we ourselves are. There's a place for each being and why we're here. So she is an animal whisperer. She teaches and helps people figure out how to speak with animals. So check out that episode with Holly Shan. Holly Shan. I can't get her I just can't get her right. On the podcast. Then finally, on Friday, last Friday, we got to speak with Bonnie Marie William. How to follow your dreams and become a superhero. Bonnie Marie William is a superhero. She is a voiceover superhero. She's been doing some amazing, amazing work. She walks in this episode on how she managed to make it happen for herself, and what it takes to get there. Last week was pretty amazing. We had these awesome guests. And then over the weekend, I got to could do some work in the backyard and get stuff, get stuff out of the way. Um, this week, what happened this week? Well, this week, what is happening is we have some amazing speakers, an amazing illustrator, a developer who became an entrepreneur, and a coach that's creating a brand new movement. So let's see. Tomorrow, for Tuesday, we're speaking, we're speaking with Candice Fati. She's a dynamic TEDx speaker, and I had the opportunity to actually listen to her. I attended the face-to-face in person, attended her um, TEDx talk uh, at TEDx Ashburn. Now, I've talked about this on the podcast before. Uh, This was my first time ever attending a TEDx talk, and it was just an amazing, amazing experience. 
And when I heard this talk, she was talking about the limbic brain and how intelligence resides in this limbic brain. So I was like, whoa, just so blown away. And I uh, got to speak with her in person after the talk. And I was like, Candice, can you please be a guest on my podcast? I'd love to introduce you to my audience and walk through your journey and how you got here. So come back tomorrow to listen to Candice Fatih's episode on Hacks and Hobbies. Next up, we get to speak with Eleanor Bick. She is a German freelance author and illustrator. I've been following her amazing journey on Twitter. She's been posting some really awesome illustrations of Pokemon and Pokemon Trainer Instructor Conversations and a comic. It And the, I was just so super fascinated by the level of details and clarity in these illustrations. So I was like, hey, can I talk to you for a minute on the podcast? And um, she also had the pinned tweet on her Twitter, which is a little skit called The Bee's Knees. It's a little TV series that she's working on, and it focuses on all the bees, what the bees are. And as we all know, I'm a beekeeper myself. I was like, let's bring you on the podcast and talk about these native bees. Did you know that there are 20,000 species of bees, of which only the honeybees create honey? All the other bees are simply pollinators, and a majority of these bees actually live underground. So we get to learn about these bees in her uh, illustration, illustrated book that she's created, and uh, she's got some other amazing talents as well. Then on Thursday, we get to speak with Hani Mora. He is a creator and founder at Repurpose.io. Now, what is Repurpose? Well, Repurpose, Repurpose enables you to automatically publish audios and videos to multiple platforms. And I've been using it with Hacks and Hobbies for some time. What's really funny is I discovered Hani. I discovered Hani through Angel Jones' episode. And um, he mentioned me that, dude, you totally need to connect with Hani. He's got a really cool vibe around him. And I was like, you know what? Let's do this. So um, Hani's been doing content marketing, automation, live video podcasting. And as you all guys know me, I'm all about the, that content marketing, automation, and hence we get to talk with Hani on this episode. So come back on Thursday to check out the episode with Hani Mara. And last but not least, on Friday, we get to speak with Jordan Gross. He is an executive coach at Cloud9 Living. He is a two times author, a three times founder, and a TEDx speaker. Now, I met him through LinkedIn as he reached out to me and said, hey, I really like what you're doing with your podcast. I would love to be a guest on your podcast as I'm looking to be a guest on over 90 different podcasts in the next couple of months. I was like, dude, I would be honored to have you on the podcast. So here we are uh, talking with Jordan Gross and uh, learn about his newfound love for Cloud9 Living. And that's, that's the movement that I was talking about, the Cloud9 Living, because we, we've all experienced that Cloud9 moment. And just to, you know, put some sense around what is Cloud9 Living, well, this episode goes a little bit deep about what is Cloud9 Living, and how we get to play with it. Anyways, that's the updates for this week and last week. So please come back 
enjoy the episodes on hacksandhobbies.com. If you have any question whatsoever, just send a message through social media on Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn. Uh, you know where to reach me. It's all available on this episode show notes. And um, yeah, pretty powerful stuff. Now, there was an article that I wanted to feature and talk a little bit about. Um, if you have a minute, I can get right into it. So now, a lot of us as Americans, we love procrastination. Now, procrastination is a habit. And sometimes it's actually good to procrastinate. But you got to have a goal in mind. You got to have a way to let that procrastination become a productivity. Now, this uh, this uh, article was uh, can be found on Fast Company's website. Uh, it's called "How I Turned My Procrastination Habit Into a Productivity Hack." Uh, it's by Justin. Pot Zapier. Now he he's not bragging, but he says that he's really good at procrastination. Tell you what, I am pretty good at procrastination as well. But what you want to do is when you're procrastinating, at least plan the rest of your day, plan the rest of your week, plan it out so then um even though you're procrastinating, but you're at least mastering your time getting it done. What's funny is, is a lot of time you procrastinate, but that's because there's something else that's urgent that needs to be get done. Uh, one of the some of the some of the ways that you can be productive is one, break your project down into really small pieces. So you you know, so that way it's much easier to swallow. You can't eat a pizza all in a single bite, you got to break it down, you got to uh, cut it in slices. And, you know, even with slices, you got to take one bite at a time. One of the things to be productive, well, if you really don't want to start on that project, well, clean something. And now uh, some people love cleaning. And if you're not one of them, I highly recommend cleaning something every time you don't want to get started on a work project. <laughs> So hilarious. Um, yeah, a lot of what people will do is, you know, they'll start listening to a podcast or turn the radio on. But you can also be cleaning at the same time. You know, turn on the podcast for Hacks and Hobbies and start cleaning something. You know, clean your basement, clean your garage. There's so many things that you can clean and get rid of stuff that doesn't need to belong in there. Next thing is tackle the simplest part of your work for the day. A lot of the times, the reason we procrastinate is because the, what you've undertaken is much bigger and harder. Well, what's the simplest thing? Simplest thing, because those easy wins give you hope, give you motivation to continue on and keep moving on. Um, you know, to get to the bigger project. Next thing you can also do is take a walk or, or you know, do some kind of exercise. Like for example, you, you can take a walk, go up and down, <laughs> go up and down the stairs, you know, get a workout in or do some kind of exercise. Um, some people will even will, you know, go for a run or take a bike ride or even a swim. So yeah, that's another way to be productive while being procrastinating. Um, or maybe actually, maybe you can talk to your coworkers. Productivity advice tends to boil us down to human machines who need just the right inputs in order to perform at peak capacity. But we're not a machine. We're a person. We're humans. And it is so much more complicated than being a machine. 
a machine you can turn off and turn back on. It'll go back to the reset state. Humans are much more smarter than all of that. The next thing you can do is you can automate something. Automating things, first of all, makes you productive. It takes away extra mundane work that you might have to do, but it also speeds up. So you're super productive and super, super awesome way to do it. Now, there are some applications that will enable automation for you. Zapier, IFFFT, and the newly the new app that's on uh, on your smartphone or on your iPhone um, is called, what is it called? Let me look it up. Hmm. It's called Tasks or something. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. It's called Shortcuts. You can build these shortcuts and automate. Um, you can... Take the shortest path where you combine a series of steps into a single shortcut to automate what you do with your apps. Or you can even create a shortcut widget. Or you can ask Siri to record uh, and ask Siri to do this, launch this thing for you. Add any shortcut to Siri by recording a personalized voice phrase. Um, Really cool app. You can do lots of amazing things with it. But yeah, you know, automate something. So to boil it down, if you want to procrastinate, um, you know, a few things. Plan the rest of your day. Break the project you don't want to start into smaller pieces. Clean something. Tackle the simplest part of your work for the day. Take a walk or do other exercise maybe actually talk to your coworkers for a bit or automate some things automate some things so that's seven tips seven things that you can do to be productive while procrastinating at the same time if you want to check out the uh, link to the article check the show notes and um happy procrastinating and hopefully you get more productive uh, by the day All right. Well, thank you so much for your time and listening to this episode of Monday Breakdown, week 28. Thanks again. Come back tomorrow to check out the episode with Candice Fati, the dynamic TEDx speaker. Thanks again. Have a wonderful day. Thank you for listening to Hacks and Hobbies. Please feel free to subscribe to the podcast so you don't miss out on upcoming interviews with amazing guests.